So the Yankees have brought in Luke Weaver last week, but they can use another swingman. I don't think they're going to utilize Nestor Cortez and Luis Hill in long relief, like I've uh, mentioned numerous times, but we'll see. But another long, another swingman would probably be a handy weapon for them to add to the arsenals, particularly since the pitching prices are insanely high for starters in free agency and in trades. So could they go another route? Yeah, they probably could. So they probably could. Now, I think they're going to wait it out and see what happens, but there's a couple of arms I want to mention to you that could be weapons probably on the cheap for the Yankees in case they don't want to play these exorbitant prices in free agency and trades. So let's get to them right now. And again, you know, they're going to make some more moves, right? The roster's at 42, like if you have, if you, if I, if you haven't heard me say that. So they've got to make some more moves. They're still looking to bring in a closer, potentially a starter, maybe one of these guys. So, which is going to take the roster even higher. So they're going to have to move guys. And I don't see a scenario where Cashman or Hal is going to add payroll without removing payroll too. So expect some outgoing moves as well in the next, in the near future, in the next couple of weeks. We're four weeks away from spring training, right around the corner. Okay. As you can see, it's snowing out. It's super icy and cold. So I'm glad I'm not outside in there right now. But with that said, the news ain't going to stop and I'm going to keep bringing it to you. So make sure that you're subbed to the channel. That way you don't miss any of it. Okay. And hit the notification if you want to be in the front of the line uh, when the news comes in. And if you find yourself enjoying this content, hit the thumbs up too. I thank you so much for that. Now, let's get to some of these arms, okay? You know what this is? This is Michael Lorenzen. He's been around for a little while, okay? He looks like a bodybuilder, right? Looks like a freaking Hulk, like a Hulk. So, um, but he's got a decent, he's got a decent track record. Okay, he's around Cincinnati Reds for about seven years, and he was with the Angels and Detroit, and he was traded to Philly this year, and he actually threw a no hitter with the Phillies. But again, this is a guy who throws 100 plus innings with some regularity, and he threw 153 innings this past year between Detroit and Philadelphia, and then he's generally around the 100, right, right around 100 in 2022. So um, this is a guy, and again, he'll throw more innings than any reliever will. So which is why the swingman role will be a perfect role for him. So he's number one, okay? Number two, Mike Clevenger, former top pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. This guy was a you know, Cy Young contender at some point, okay? And then he, he moved to uh, the San Diego Padres in a trade, and then he moved with, uh, to Chicago White Sox this past year. But this guy's thrown 131 innings last year, 114 the year before, and he's thrown uh, 121. He's thrown 200 and 126. So he's thrown some innings, and I think he's uh, – had Tommy John surgery as well, so he's way beyond that now. Um, but he's another one who can throw a good amount of innings for the Yankees and probably at a reasonable price. Okay, and the last guy, and I got to give a shout out to my man Bobby Malone for pointing out Jacob Junis. He's another guy he's with the Kansas City Royals for several years, okay, for five years, and he's with the Giants the last two. But he's another guy who throws, he's thrown 177, 175 innings, 112 innings, and is 86 this past year. So he's another guy that can give you a decent amount of, whether it be long relief, whether it be spot starting. That's why we call him swingman. Okay. These are all right-handed pitchers who can give the Yankees a little bit more length if they don't. Then, and I don't think they're going to bring in Blake Snell. I don't think they're going to bring in, bring in Josh Hader. They're both connected to qualifying offers. So they're not only going to cost a ridiculous amount of money, and not only are the Yankees already over the Cohen threshold, they're going to cost also two draft picks as well as international signing money. A million dollars. And the Yankees are already connected to the top free agent next year, too, in the international uh, market, too. So I we don't want to position the Yankees to lose out in the opportunity to do that. So, but let me know what you think of these three guys. Am I missing anybody? And there's some other ones that you could probably poke around and name Alex Wood and a couple of the people, but these guys will probably represent the most logical fits for the Yankees. They could be had on a relatively decent contract wouldn't balloon them. And again, you could probably trade a reliever to offset the, most of the salary that these guys would get. So, and, and I still think the Yankees are going to move some relievers. They've added three relievers already. So, and they've added Luke Weaver as well, who I think could be a sneaky good, I think, a, you know, like a sneaky good swing man. So, and they've gotten some relievers coming back. Like I said, Hill, Scott Frost, they've got Cody Moss, they've added Gonzalez. So, we've got some weapons. And is it? Chance that they may bring back Juan de Peralta and or sign a guy like uh, Hector Neris or Robert Stevenson, a big power arm in the back end for the back end of the bullpen as well. So let me know what your thoughts are. But could you see them bringing in a swingman? I could. And I've said this before. I mean, I've been a proponent of long relief 
serving as a bridge between starters and the bullpen for years now. So and this, this provides an opportunity for them to do that too. And again, you know, if a starter gets hurt, you got some reinforcements, right? And if the, if, if the, the kids in AAA aren't yet ready, you got some reinforcements. So that's another way to look at it too. So they have a massive depth and security blanket in the infield and the outfield position player stable, but, you know, do we have enough pitching depth? And you can never have enough pitching is the question. You let me know, gang. Let's talk about it. Have a great day. I'll see you all next time.